write the autopsy report and, um, to make sure I've covered everything. Right. And will this assist you as we, uh, as you explain to the jury the injuries that the two victims suffered? Yes. Um, Dr. Reamer, let's again, starting with Paul, if you could very quickly, uh, how many, um, did you observe any gunshot wounds uh, to Paul? Well, actually, there were two shotgun wounds, um, so that's a different than a, a, you know, a handgun or, um, so a shotgun is uh, where there, you know, there's uh, basically um, um, pellets that are um, enclosed in a wadding, and the wadding, um, after it's fired from the shotgun, um, kind of opens up and allows all these pellets um, to be released from the wadding. And so um, the features of his injuries um, told me, in no uncertain terms, that he was shot with a shotgun. And let's, if I could ask you with the court's permission, if you could step down. I'm going to hold up this board, and if you could bring a marker with you. I've got a red Sharpie right here, if that helps you. And let's talk about the injuries that you observed to Paul Murdoch. And then if you could, for the jury, if you could illustrate, draw on this board, um, that the, the first uh, gun sh uh, shotgun wound that you observed on Paul. All right. Let me put mine up real quick. Okay. Okay, so in order to make things as clear to you as possible, I'm going to use a black marker for an entrance, entrance wound and red for exit, okay? So just arbitrarily. Okay, so Paul had two shotgun wounds. Um, one of them was to the left side of the chest, approximately this location. And the, the um, wadding containing the pellets traveled beneath the skin through like the soft tissue of the left side of the chest. It didn't actually go into the chest cavity, but traveled um, beneath the, the skin and in, through the muscle and fat um, before um, exiting the left Okay, so it's kind of a straight, kind of left to right, I'm sorry, right to left shot. And, um, and just real quick, when you say right to left, you're talking about Paul's right to yeah, left. Yeah, that's right. So I'm always thinking about like the patient's right to left. Okay, it's not, if we look at it, it's from, you know, would be from left to right. But I always, we always, for consistency, it's always relative to his body. Down here by the hands, could you put an R on one side and an L on the yeah, other, just because sure. I know I get confused. Yeah, no, it is. And honestly, we, we all do this during autopsies as well, because especially we have the back, and, and um, it's very easy to make a mistake. And also, just real quick, could you write Paul up at the top there? All right, thank you. All okay. right. All right, so you were talking about that first shotgun wound into the chest and where it exited. Did, were yes. there any other injuries associated with that? Please continue on. Um, yes. So the, the remember we have wadding enclosing pellets. The wadding actually um, got stuck, you know, didn't completely exit and continue to fly out. It got stuck right underneath the skin. Um, of the left side of the chest, like close to the armpit area. And uh, we have a photograph of that um, pink wadding that um, remained um, in the skin of the exit wound. From there, multiple of um, the shotgun pellets um, started going through like the left arm, okay, starting from the underside of the left arm. So the, the, the wadding terminated in the skin, and then pellets kind of went out and went through the left arm. Um, and okay, so this is the left. Remember, this is his left side, his left, his left shoulder, his left arm. And then we've got a bunch of um, exit um, pellet wounds on the left side of the arm, and some also um, a little bit on the back. So that. Um, you can see this is going through, and then this is actually on the inside of the arm, and um, the exits are kind of on the left side. So, Was there any uh, stippling associated with this particular wound? Yes, okay. So there was stippling, and um, I'll draw that um, over here, okay? So when 
a projectile comes out of the barrel of a weapon, be it a shotgun, a handgun, um, an assault rifle, um, what propels that projectile, we call, you know, projectile out of the barrel of the gun? Okay, it's it's um, gunpowder, and gunpowder is basically ignited through the action of um, the shooter with on the gun, and um, so <coughs> gunpowder is basically burning and projects the projectile out of the barrel of the gun. A projectile can potentially travel a very long distance, like you know many like many feet or you know yards or a long depending on the, the projectile until it hits something, or if it doesn't hit anything, it can eventually lose power and hit, go to the ground. But um, the gunpowder that leaves the barrel of the weapon can travel um, not too far. It only travels about uh, up to three feet, depending on the weapon. So in this case, we actually have some particles of um, like abrasions from particles of gunpowder. And this is called gunpowder stippling. Okay, so we have stippling, which indicates that th this wound was fired at a fairly close range. We can't say exactly, but probably no more than three feet, because that's our standard. You know, it could be anywhere from two to three feet. Um, and um, interestingly enough, there were some markings on the edge of this um, kind of cookie cutter type of defect from the um, wadding going in that shows that some of the petals of the wadding are beginning to open. So this is very classic for a um, shotgun entrance wound and um, at the autopsy shows that it went after going through the um, underneath the left side of the chest, it went through the left arm. All right. And let me ask you this, and, and uh, before we look at some of the, uh, the pictures, which are very graphic, is that correct? Um, yes, it's just the nature of the beast. Okay. If uh, um, this particular uh, injury, was it uh, immediately fatal? Um, no. Amazingly enough, um, this really, um, if that was all he sustained, he would have needed medical attention and um, some stitches and irrigation of the wound to clean it out and make sure he doesn't get infected. But it, um, it actually did not pierce the chest or cause any internal bleeding. It did, however, cause a bruise or contusion of the left lung and that's because you know the um, it's there's a lot of energy associated with this um, but didn't actually go through the ribs um, but caused a contusion of the left lung but he would have been expected to be continue to be standing after this it would not have sent him to the ground all right um, if you could, there's a dowel stick over by um, your your witness stand and I'm gonna make sure the jurors down here can see what you're talking about if you could grab that for me real quick and then uh, we'll look at uh, some of the pictures here. So okay, what do you want me to do? Well, I just wanted to show it to these jurors down here just to make sure oh, they can see sure. what you were okay. doing. And uh, okay. then uh, if you could just stay standing for me, I'm going to um, give them an exhibit to stand by the real quick. Not the room. to keep these pointed this way if you could, but I'm going to have you just look through states 478, 479, 480, 481, and 482 and see if you recognize those images. Okay. Um, so these are um, photographs. And just real quick, just tell me if you recognize them. Um, yes. I, I recognize all of them. All right. And these images that were taken during the autopsy you conducted of Paul Murdoch? Yes. All right, and would they assist you in explaining the injuries to the jury? Yes. All right, Your Honor, this time I've moved states 478, 479, 480, 481, and 482 into evidence. No objection, Your Honor. without objection. All right. Now, Dr. Reamer, if you get the dowel stick and come around here to this screen, I'm going to put this first image up on 
the uh, Elmo, and then if you could, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about these injuries and describe them. Okay. So um, we can see um, it's not great focus here, but um, this is the entrance uh, shotgun wound on the left side of the chest. His, his left nipple, his left nipple is over here. So it's the left side of the chest, and there is some stippling around and Dr. it. Dr. Rumor, I apologize. Okay. If you could come around and work this way, so that all our jurors oh, who are that way can absolutely. can see. Okay. Awesome. All right. So um, the uh, shotgun um, wound is going in this direction. Remember, it exited that left side of the chest and then continued through the left arm. Um, so that is a photograph of that wound to the shotgun wound to the chest. All right. And we'll see uh, some more close-up images here in a minute. But... Uh, this is the entrance wound right here, is that correct? Yes. And then we have we have some injuries right here. Is that where those yes. pedals exited that into the arm? That is where the um, yes the um, uh, the wadding, which is the plastic piece and closing the pellets, um, terminated in the skin. It just didn't manage to get out. But all those pellets kind of got released from the wadding and went through um, the left the left arm. I'm going to move. That was states 478 for the record. I'm going to move now to states 479. And what is this, this image? Okay. So this is a more close-up view of um, the entrance wound. And um, you can see that it looks like there's little, um, like, s almost squares or pegs sticking out uh, of the edge. And um, that tells us that um, the wadding is starting to open because it opens up, it kind of opens up, there's petals. And this is a classic, I, I could put it in a book to say that this is um, consistent with um, a uh, shotgun entrance wound. Okay, and we can see the dots around here, those are from pieces of, um, of gunpowder that have basically impacted the skin because it's within a distance of three feet or so. Moving now to states 480. Okay. So um, usually when I take a photo, I don't want to go too close because then you won't be able to see where it is on the body. But here, this is recognized, this is the nipple, right? His left nipple. And we saw the entrance wound over here. And so here we have the, um, this is the an exit wound where this pink um, wadding is basically um, stuck right there and you can see these are the petals on the edge and that's what gave that unique appearance to the entrance wound. Now this this is basically a cylinder that encloses um, lots of pellets and then the pellets here we, we start to actually have some of the pellets coming through the surrounding skin and then along the left side of the um, lateral side of the chest um, kind of below <coughs> the armpit area. All right, and I'm going to show you what's been marked as States 111. Uh, are they in evidence at this time? Do you recognize that? Yes, so that is the, um, the wadding that I recovered at autopsy and took a picture of it before I recovered it. Um, and uh, that, so that's the wadding that was from um, Paul's chest. And just again, just uh, point back where that is in that image, please. Yeah, so here it is. It's kind of peeking out through this big hole um, in the um, left side of the chest. All right, let me uh, move on to the next exhibit. I'm going to put up on the screen now states 481. And uh, tell me what this image is. Okay, so this is a photograph of um, the same wadding, but I'm taking it from a different angle. Okay, so he's lying on an autopsy table, and I've moved his arm up to show the relationship of this. Um, wadding with the entrance um, pellet wounds on the underside, the, the underside of the left arm. And um, interestingly enough, 
Um, a lot of times pellets just go through the skin, but here we have some abrasions around the skin, and it actually corresponds to abrasions. We normally don't have abrasions with an exit wound, such as we have here, but the fact that we have abrasions in, on the underside of the, the left side of the chest corresponding to the inside of the arm indicates that his arm was down at the time of um, th this injury. So let me ask you about that. In your expert opinion, having done 5,500 autopsies, is there any way that Paul's hands were up when he suffered that shotgun wound to the chest that you've been talking about? Um, no. There, there, the, the autopsy answers that question, that his arm was down by his side at the time he sustained this injury. And again, highlight the specific features that you observe that cause you to come to that expert okay. opinion. So if Let's just say hypothetically, if his arm was up, you see all of these abrasions around this exit defect and the abrasions around these pellet entrances. We wouldn't see that because they, um, the, those are caused by when, when these pellets and the wadding is pressing up against the skin, the skin is very elastic. So this is just kind of logic. I think you're, you're all going to get this. It's kind of going to push the skin before it actually exits. The skin's going to stretch a lot. And if it hits up against the other portion of the skin, we have kind of abrasions, which are kind of scrapes on the skin around where it exited as well as where it entered. So um, these are sometimes called um, like a, it's a short exit wound. So the the the, um, the skin actually um, struck another area, uh, and in fact, it it corresponds exactly. It's like a reflection. We can see this is this is reflected. Here's this is this one is reflected over here. So um, if we can only get that kind of a mark if his if his arm is down. Now this is the kind of thing that you know is. It's, it's a, the logical conclusion, and I'm confident that that was, was the position of his arm at the time he was shot. And this is based on my training and more than 20 years of experience doing these um, cases. All right. Let me uh, look at the next exhibit, which will be 482 for the record. And tell us, uh, tell us what you see okay. here, and also, if you could, how that also uh, supports the conclusions you were just talking about to yes. the jury. Okay, so these are um, the exit pellet wounds on the outside of the arm in this area, right? So this is kind of like his armpit here. And we can see these are kind of just, these pellet exit wounds don't have the kind of abrasions around it. This is just kind of finding its way through the skin. And then this one is over here. So, and if the further the pellets travel, it kind of splays out. So, um, after the pellets um, leave the wadding that is open, it's it, they're they're spread. So, um, but these are um, you know exit um, pellet wounds, and we don't have the kind of abrasions to suggest that his arm was pressed up against anything at the time that those pellets exited. Right. Um, one other thing as well is uh, when talking about his arm being down, of course, the wadding stopped in, in that wound still in his chest, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, let me, uh, let's move on. Just give me uh, one second here to get some other exhibits and show them to defense counsel. All right, Dr. Reamery, if I could get you maybe to stand that way just a little bit. I know we're, we're in tight confines, and then we're trying to be re as respectful as we can with these images. Um, I'm going to show you now what's been marked as 483, states 484, states 485, 486, and 487. And uh, just quickly tell me if you recognize those, and then I want to go back to the board before we talk about those pictures. 
Yes, I recognize these. All right, and those uh, autopsy photographs that you took of yes. Paul Murdoch? These are photographs that I took at the autopsy of Paul Murdoch. And would they assist you in explaining to the jury the injuries that he suffered? Yes. Your Honor, this time I'd move states 483, 484, 485, 486, and 487 into evidence. No objection, Your Honor. They are admitted. Sealed. Yes, sir. And, and for the record, I, these these are under seal, and I provided the cover sheets to the court reporter. Every exhibit except for the uh, poster board that we're doing, uh, the state would uh, request to be under seal because of their graphic nature. All right, uh, Dr. Reamer, let's, uh, that was, uh, and we'll come back a little bit more to that first injury, but there was a second shotgun injury as well. Is that correct? Correct. All right. And uh, I'm going to go back to States 500, which is the poster board, and if you could uh, explain to and draw on this uh, this um, diagram that second injury, and then okay. we'll look at the pictures. So there was a large shotgun wound defect to the top of his left shoulder, and um, there were a lot of pellets recovered in the left shoulder area, and from there the um, it kind of just went across the top of the left shoulder and then went into the left side of the neck and face. Okay. And from there, his face actually was not destroyed from this, but there is a big exit wound on the top of the right side of the head. So this wound went from his left toward his right and upward and with a slight front to back deviation. Now, what does that tell us? We don't really know. It's kind of going um, toward, it, it's sparing his face, it's going behind the face. Now, one thing that makes sense to me, how could that happen? If he was just standing, not everybody gets shot like standing like these diagrams, right? But if he was shot and his face was forward, it would have uh, taken off a lot of his face. However, if he is turned toward the shooter, then it's going to go into the face here and go out towards the right back of the head. So to me, it makes sense that his head is turned to the left. Um, not necessarily completely, but partially turned to the left. And um, what happened here was an extremely severe, immediately fatal injury, because what it did was that after it went through um, the left side of the neck and face, um, it, our <coughs> brain is basically held up through um, the skull. So we have bone at the top of the skull, but then we also have a bone that kind of holds up the brain. It went through the base of the skull, Okay, which is kind of like in this area, the, the brain is up there. And this um, wound, actually, his brain um, was ejected out of the top of the right side of his head and actually arrived at the autopsy in a separate bucket. So this, the force of this wound um, actually pushed his, the brain out of his head. There was only just a small piece of brain remaining, and that's the brain stem that was attached to um, the spinal cord. All right, and, and real quickly, uh, going back to the, the first wound to the chest, if Paul was standing when he suffered that, could he have remained standing after suffering that wound? Yes. All right. The second wound, the one that starts in the shoulder and goes in here and then out the top of his head, what would have been the effect of that wound? That would have been immediately fatal, and he would not have been standing. He would have just fallen to, fallen to the ground. All right, and would he have been capable at all of bracing his fall or anything like that with, an, with a catastrophic injury like that? Uh, no, that's instant, instantaneous death. All right. Did you notice any abrasions on his face or anything like that? Yes, he did have, um, and it's depicted in the, one of the photographs, um, he does have a kind of a scrape on his <coughs> face, um, and um, very frequently scrapes on the face that have, they have a, it has a slight directionality. It's consistent with a terminal collapse. So if he's hitting the ground with some movement, there's frequently kind of a linear pattern. And you know, the, all of this really makes sense. Um, when Once you see these things, you can understand that if somebody's gonna fall with um, like, a, you know, the force of their body and not 
they're going to hit their face on the ground, and we get some abrasions that correspond to that. All right. And uh, let me do this real quick. If you could grab that dowel stick for me, and I'm going to make sure the jurors down here had a chance to see what you've been drawing. Okay. So that's the shoulder right yeah. there, and then... Yeah, I should have made a red mark here to mm -hmm. be consistent. This is the exit wound on the right side of the top. And the brain came out of, of that exit. You mentioned a little bit about being consistent with Paul kind of having his head tilted to one side. If you could use the dowel stick, maybe use me as an example and, and show me kind of what you're what you're talking about. You okay. can position me however you want to. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's go out here a little so bit. So yeah. we start with like a different idea, okay? In, in order to understand how that's the case. So um, if a, a shotgun wound is entering the top of the left shoulder, and let's say his head is turned like that, it's gonna go right through the face, right? But if his head is turned like that, it's gonna spare the face and be able to go behind the face. So if somebody's just standing looking straight ahead, it, this most likely would have done a lot of damage to his face. But the fact that um, the face is remained intact tells me that his head was, um, I don't know, up or down, but his head was facing in the direction from where um, the, um, the shotgun was um, being fired. Right. And then the injury to the shoulder would have been where? If you just pointed to this. Yes. So uh, 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 it's kind of on the top of the shoulder. This also did not injure his chest cavity. It kind of went through a lot of the, the skin and muscle and, and fat of the left shoulder. And there were, um, there, there were a lot of um, pellets that were recovered from the left shoulder area as well as um, the head and neck. And I'm going to uh, show you very quickly what's been marked as uh, stakes 110 and do you recognize this item right, Marty and evidence? Um, yes, these are the um, pellets um, that I recovered from um, the left shoulder and head area. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and if you could uh, stay on that side so the jurors can see and I'm going to... Um, this side? Yeah, if you could work on this side so that the jurors down on that end can see and I'm going to look at some of these. Uh. All right, and I'm going to show you uh, first what's been marked as States 483 and can you tell me uh, what uh, what's on this particular image, particularly as to some of the things you were just describing as to the abrasion and things like that? Yes. So um, we can see this is basically an abrasion is a fancy word for scrape. So there are scrapes on the right side of his face. And you can see they, they kind of have, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of a linearity. So if he just felt completely flat, we might just get um, like, you know, dots, but the, if there's some movement, we get, it's, it's kind of, he's hitting the ground and then moving it a little bit as his hit, face hits, so we get this kind of vertical direction. And this is a very typical type of um, injury to the face that somebody might suffer from a terminal collapse. So after they sustain a fatal injury, what are they going to do? They're going to fall to the ground. Now, depending on the surface of, you know, if it's concrete or, you know, grass, we might get some, but this is very typical of a, um, you know, I don't know what kind of surface it was, but it, a, a terminal collapse. Okay. All right, if you would, uh, with this image, and this would be Stuart States 484, uh, please explain to the jury using this image some of the concepts that you've okay. been describing to them. So this is the top of his left shoulder, and um, this is the continuation of the um, ammunition through the left side of the uh, lower face. And um, from there, it proceeded behind the face through the base of the skull and exited the right side of the top of the head. And sort of toward the back of the right, right. side of the top. 
And those two sort of together, they are, that's kind of what you're describing for when you had positioned my head yes. in the manner in which yeah, you did. Yeah, that's right. So my feet turn to the left like that. I think that makes the most logical sense, and forensic pathology is really logical. So when we look at these things, we have to think, well, how could this have happened? And, um, you know, uh, after the, uh, it's not always immediately obvious, but, you know, with some thought, we can um, come to these conclusions with confidence. Turning now to States 485. So it's just another perspective. Um, yes, so this is the same um, injury. This is, is formed by a single. Um, a single piece of ammunition here that went through the top of the left shoulder, it tore it up, right, and then went into the left side of his face and neck. And some of these pellets also damage, did a lot of damage in the neck because they kind of splay out as they go further. And it went, some of them went actually through his airway and other structures of the neck, um, as well as continuing um, through the base of the skull and um, propelling the majority of the brain out the right side of the back of the head. Okay. And now going to the sort of the, the end of that particular one, to tell us what this okay. image represents. So, you know, you can um, kind of see, it looks like this piece of his Head, we're not really seeing the entire thing because his forehead is basically still intact. But you can appreciate at this point that um, you know the contours of his skull are disrupted, and that's because um, there's a defect at the top of the skull, but not involving the forehead, so it's kind of in the back. So we know it's um, it was going. We started the shoulder. It's been in the back. So his head may have been like that. Um, toward the, facing toward the left. Um, finally, states four eight seven. Okay. Now this is um, all right. Um, so this is. Um, I can't. Yes. Sorry for me to say what I'm doing. It's but, okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is actually a, a photograph of um, the right side of this is this is his um, the face area. Okay. And I know that because I usually when I take a photograph of, of the number. Um, I usually have it like right side up. Okay, so this is um, the top of his head, and this I, is. Not I apologize. No, Please. yeah, um, like that, yeah, that's good. Better. Right. So now you can sort of see this is the right side of his head, and it's horrible. I know, um, and there's a big defect there, and um, we can see the inside of the skull, and but it, you know his face was spared, so. All right, Dr. Uh, Raymer, if you would. That's all the images I have right now. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Um, Thank you, gentlemen. Jury room for a few moments. Please not discuss the case.